Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Robert Yatley. I'm the program, one of the program directors here at the gym. I help run the day-to-day -day business of the entire gym. I also help in the managing, I would call it, of the men's program. I no longer coach the men's program. I'm not the head coach. I just use their voice as my voice, and that's the voice you usually hear. Um, this is Scott Raymond. He's been with us for quite some time now. He started with us uh, as an athlete, a senior athlete. He came to us from Ontario. He's now one of our senior coaches within the men's program, and he's going to be running your program for years and years to come. So, as one of these steps that he's going to take on his career journey, today he is going to be the voice of the men's program tonight to talk to you a little bit about the levels and how you progress through the gym uh, as an athlete. So you can feel a little bit as a parent. He'll talk about some of the age ages that are associated with it, what category names they are. The one thing that you have to realize with the names is they change. So for years we had Argo Tyro, those are gone. So most of you are newer parents, I would suggest, so that you may not be attached to the past names, but uh, Scott will also address some of the past names that were um, part of the gymnastics program of Canada. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about what meetings you can expect as a parent as you go into your, uh, as your son's career progresses, and a little bit about some of the events that we go to and how we select boys to it. Please, have a seat. Thanks, come on up. Sorry, mate. Oh, it's all right. Sorry, mate. Oh, sorry. Sorry, um, so now you can turn just, just me. Okay, he works for free, I know. Um, Scott is now going to take over the meeting. Okay, uh, so here we kind of have our flow chart of the pathway that we've set. Uh, most of you are parents of super kids or past super kids. Uh, so that's our first uh, step. Uh, we created super kids seven years ago. Uh, Elijah Thompson, uh, Toby Karens, they were our first group of super kids. Uh, so we've found a lot of success so far since Satellite was national champion this past year. Uh, okay, so super kids ages three and a half to six. It's kind of how we see. We've had a couple three, couple sevens, but it, uh, you know we have to make special exceptions for that. Uh, then from super kids you move up to nighttime level one. That's our first year of competition. So Kevin's group. Um, they'll be competing that year. It's kind of a coach. Uh, permission kind of thing if he sees that the boys are ready for competition. So where is the pre-competitive boys? The pre-competitive boys would be our, really what we call the nighttime super kids. Yeah. So that is just a newly formed for this past year. Uh, that's with Richard for any of you who don't know that. He's down there training right now. And they also train on Mondays with John and Sundays as well. So that was a group that we had some older super age kid boys that uh, needed a step, but they weren't quite ready for level one. So we were able this past year to utilize uh, Richard and create what we consider pre-competitive. Because we hope that they can compete at the end of the year, but it was not a must-have goal. Yeah. It was more preparatory for the level one. Yeah, and our goal is that even though Super Kids is not pre-competitive, we feel by the end of Super Kids, they, they're almost competitive ready. Right, and that's kind of how I look at things. So they do level one, six to eight years old. Um, we made it, there's been a couple boys that have made exceptions in the past couple years that have been age five, that have just been really good, uh, that we've moved up early. Um, from level one, you go to level two. Pretty straightforward, seven to nine. Um, and then there's the lead. The level one and two as well. The meets that these boys go to are all regional. So that is your provincial championships, uh, First maybe and a second. Fun meet in Red Deer or Canmore, something like that. They don't necessarily travel outside of the province, except for maybe for our, our great time down in Vegas or something like that. But really, those ones are what you might call regional athletes. It's much more regional what they compete in. Okay. Um, then you start getting into the high performance program, which is what it's called for the national team or national uh, criteria. So you have Elite Three. That was previously pre-Argo. Um, that's ages 9 and 10. These categories now, these ones you can move up and down, kind of, or up a year early. So we have a boy, one of the boys that's in my group. Um, he's sixth this year as of this competition year. So normally we haven't moved boys up to level two until they're eight or seven. So he can actually move up a little bit early. Um, these categories, as we get, you cannot move up early. So it's kind of a straightforward two years mandatory. Um, so you have Elite 3. And this is where we start to kind of make changes um, based off performance, criteria, 
uh, work ethic and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we're a little bit more flexible with the boys' abilities into our level one and two. Again, because it's regional. But when we move to the Elite Three, there is a criteria that's set out by Gymnastics Canada that they have to meet. And this is when the sport becomes a little bit more selective. So when boys turn nine years of age, there's going to be a criteria or minimum skill level that they have to meet. And it's not set out by us, we're not the meanies, okay? We just have to follow it with Gymnastics Canada. And that starts at age nine. That's when the boys have to meet the skill set, have to be able to be this flexible, and that's the Elite Three. Okay, sorry, okay. continue. So they would have to stay in this category for two years. They cannot move up early. Um, we have a, Elijah moved up, the old system moved up three years early. And now he's stuck in this one for two more years, so he's really done this category for five years. So now it's, it's kind of straightforward, it's two years, two years, and so on. So we make a, make a choice. Elite four is the old Argo, 11, 12, and level four. It is pretty much the same category, identical. They each have an optional routine. The only thing different now is the lead four has a compulsory. That's your selection criteria. So that's a compulsory routine that they must perform at a certain level to meet, to meet the standards of Gymnastics Canada. Um, so they're this, the same rules, same thing, just this has a compulsory component. We, we have an arrow going back and forth. So say you have, you have an athlete that is in uh, lead three, does two years not quite ready to do the compulsory routines of Leap 4, but he has some strengths on some other events. We put him level 4 for a year. He does really good, accelerates, he catches up on those compulsory routines. His second year, he jumps back into the elite stream. Okay, so it's not like when you make your transition to the provincial stream, you're stuck in the provincial stream. There's always a way back if the kids work hard and show the requirements. So that's kind of a back and forth. And the same thing, they do a first year, they're doing really good in Leap 4, and maybe they have an injury or they just they're struggling of some sort, grow the height, yeah. You know, they can't quite do the routines, they, they can make the jump to a, a level four a little easier on them. Okay? And then you have youth and novice, which again are the same, pretty much the same two categories. This one and this one have the same optional requirements, except novice has a compulsory requirement as well. The only thing else that's different with novice is it is the first category that gets to go to nationals. Oh. So that's the first category where the boys will actually be able to achieve, attend national championships. So which would be age 13. Any questions about those levels right there? It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward and again you can make the jump. You do a year novice, not quite there, go to youth or vice versa, right? Then we have open and junior. Open is kind of a category where it's for anyone really, 14 and plus, you could be 30, 30 years old and competing in open, right? Uh, and for a comeback title. Sweet. Yeah. I'm not 30. <laughs> 40. You, you 30. can be older than 30. Yeah. You can be whatever age you want. Uh, we have, there's a, a lot of boys in this category, a lot of boys that aren't quite ready uh, for the senior level. Uh, junior, uh, same com optional requirements as open, but it has certain criteria that you must meet to attend and compete as a junior. So certain scores, certain uh, start values that you must have. Um, start value refers to each skill is awarded uh, points. And a start value is you add up all the skills, points together, to come up with a start value. So if you ever hear start value, it's the difficulty of a routine. Uh -huh. The higher the difficulty, the greater you're gonna score. So that's what a start value is. And I think, I think uh, GCG has a 5.5 .5 star value. So that's all your skills added up. You know, you got a 0.4 skill, a 0.3 skill, it all adds up. If you don't have a minimum of 5.5, .5, I don't know if that's for senior or junior, but then you're not eligible for that thing. And then it all leads, hopefully, to senior. Senior is 18 plus. And again, it's performance based. So if you're 18 and you want to go senior, you have to make sure you have the proper star values and requirements, or else you're in open. That's kind of the pathway that we have set up. Um, and the, the levels that you go kind of dictate where you can compete in certain competitions. So here I wrote down like an example. Um, we have a boy, so he's age four and five, he's in Super Kids. And then he gets out, moves up to level one for six and seven. Age eight, he moves into level two. Age nine and 10, he's in Elite Three. 
age 11 and 12, he's in Elite Four. Now he's not quite ready, maybe he grew a lot, not quite ready for novice yet, so he goes a year in youth. Then, you know, he's got over that growth spurt, he's ready to go, routines have improved, requirements have been met, he moves into novice, age 15 and to 17, he's in junior. Uh, there are certain things you can move up to junior a year earlier, if you're uh, 14 as of January. Um, so if we look up here, the age, this is a big one that has changed, the age determination date is September 1st now. It used to be December 31st or January 1st, can't remember, at the end of the year. So now for boys that are born after, so if you're born September 2nd, you are in a category a year later than a boy do, born the end of August. Even though you're a couple days apart, you're in a different age category. Um, so, for example, Nick turns nine on November 5th. Even though he's nine throughout the whole year, he's an eight-year-old as of September 1st. So, like your boy, he was, okay. so. That was the example. Exactly, that was the example, okay? It's a good example. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and then there's certain, uh, so all these categories, junior, you can move up a year early, but there are certain criteria to be met, and it's as of January instead of September. Um, and then here again, so he's age 18, he's doing senior, he turns 22, maybe he's getting a job now, he can't commit to the training hours, just wants a little bit less, and go open, continue competing and having fun in the gym for as long as he wants. Um, and we have some of those guys. Yeah. And that's nothing, there's a lot of guys that do, that end up going to Cirque and stuff like that that go through open. And there's a lot of guys that go through open that end up going back to senior and doing really well. Okay, so the, the path is it's kind of straightforward, but it can be all over the place. Um, any questions about the pathway? No? It can't be that clear. Is it really that clear? That yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. Now, there's a parent in the hallway. You think you can explain it a little bit? If I have the diagram. <laughs> the diagram. Is it possible to give some ind indication of the time commitment, like hours per week of training in a specific level? Um, so Super Kids is, what do we have? Super Kids is really cool. one and a half, or we, we kind of expect two, so that's three to four hours to six hours. Um, and then your level ones are roughly nine to 12 hours. So there is quite a bit of a jump there. Level two, twos, excuse me, are 12 to 16 hours. I think Cam's group right now is doing 16. And then as you start getting to lead three, then you're up in the, the 16 to 20s. And really 24, I think Jin's group is at 22? 22, 22, 22, 24 is really as high as we take the boys. The summer is a little bit different. Summer, sometimes we go up close to 30, um, but they have no school. They can tend easy for them to handle. I don't want them at home anymore. Yeah, keep So it's pretty, uh, it does jump up a little bit through the first few, few years, and then it pretty, 16 to 20, it stays there for a while. You have you to won't. understand, we, we don't ask for more training hours because we want your money. We want more training hours because it has to be safe. And in order for our sport to be safe, we have to do skills a thousand, thousand, thousand right. times. And if you've seen the boys in the gym walking around with braces on and different things, it's not from gymnastics. <laughs> it's from that hill over there, or it's from the hill down the way, or it's from skateboarding, or whatever. Yeah. We are a very safe sport because of how often we do things repetitively so it's second nature to them. And that's why we ask for the hours that we do. That's a good question. So these training hours, once the boys get up to the higher levels, Yep. Are they all uh, after school or do you do morning ones as well? Um, we have a couple. Uh, I know Jin's group does a couple mornings. Uh, we have a couple mornings with the high performance boys as well. Um, it's something that we've talked about. We would like to open mornings for everyone if they can. Um, but uh, it may be, it's up to the head coach and the, what he sees. But there may be morning requirements as they get older. I know, yes. I know Miguel's wanted morning trainings for when, when you're in high performance. There's a requirement to try to be in the morning. If you're in the high performance, not this junior, senior, you're probably going to be experiencing morning, morning. training in some way. So morning, afternoon, same Correct. day. Yeah. Right. And they have one day Wednesdays where it's just morning, and then they have an evening yeah. off. When I trained here, it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7.39. So you'd go at 7.39, and then you'd go, and then it was 3 to 7 at night as well. And right now, junior high is able to go down here to the sports school. 
and we assist with that process. So once you reach junior high, you are able to apply for there. If That's four, 14, 13, 14, uh, 15. How old is Ben, ben Resta and Jackson Carrots? They're, they're applying four, this 14 ish? Yeah, yes. so, so right in here again, we, we have a pathway to help make it a little easier. Um, but it's not one that we can assure that you get into it. It has to be a little bit based on their criteria. And we are exploring other opportunities with other schools, I believe it's Queen Elizabeth, that the uh, women's program is approaching to see if they can have kind of an open school situation with them at a younger age as well. So it's something that the gym does uh, feel we can assist with. It's just, it's on the burner. It's just not percolating maybe as much as all the parents would want, but we're trying to assist you with that. Any other questions about that? Okay. Um, so over here we have a couple uh, meeting things that happen throughout the year. Uh, one is your contract and group and level placement uh, meetings. That's usually after nationals. So we have our strategic planning meeting usually right after nationals, which is beginning of June. Contracts go out third week of June or first week of June. Um, so all the coaches will have a meeting with, with all of you and go over the contract with you, where your son has been placed, what group he is, what level he is in. Um, usually at that time too, you go, we go through competitions and stuff like that. Um, so for the most part, it answers any questions that you have kind of pertaining to that year. Um, then there's the icebreaker social, um, which we've had outside of the gym, I think, for most right. of the time. That's usually at a pub or a restaurant or something. The Italian club. Italian club, that was really good last year. Uh, that goes over goals, objectives, calendar events, more of the, a program base rather than a specific child and coach. Uh, and then there's your mid-year review, which is in December. You know, how did summer training go? Are we on the right path for this level? Do we need to make the jump over here or the jump to here? You know, he's not quite ready with those compulsory routines. Let's put him here so he can focus on the optionals and that sort of stuff. Um, those are kind of your three big. And then there's one like this every year for for the newer parents. Um, I think that's it for really... And if you have any problems or anything like that, you can approach your coach and say, yeah. could we set up a meeting? Don't expect the coach to be able to meet that day, though. They may have some other plans, but if you send off an email or talk to them after practice, hey, I'd love to meet with you maybe next week. Can we pick a time? And then you should expect that a time is yeah. met within seven days that you can meet and talk about uh, either a concern or maybe something that's going great, share that too. Um, and if we have a real concern, a real concern, we'll get you too. We're not gonna come with you with Johnny's follow horses is lacking right now. We're not gonna do that every day. We're just not going to do it. But you know, if we have a behavioral problem or he's missing way too much gym, then we'll seek you out as well. Yeah, and most of the parents, um, really me and Cam for the most part, are always down at the end of the night at the water fountain area. So if you guys have any questions, if you need us to relay a message you know, to your personal coach, saying, hey, do you mind if uh, you know, Kevin had to leave early or something? Do you mind if uh, you let Kevin know that I'd like to talk to him next day or something, right? One of us is usually always down there. So if you have a concern or a question, you can either ask us if, it, if it's a question pertaining specifically to your son, that's usually directed to your coach though, okay? I don't want to answer questions about the deal, right? Because I don't, don't work with him. So that's better for Kevin to do. Um, and then we have your selection criteria, and that kind of all is related to what level you are in. A couple of big competitions that have selections, uh, there's Westerns. That's changed this year. Uh, before it was, it was getting a little bit small, and with the changes to Gymnastics Canada, Argos, and, or Elite 3, 4, right they do not attend Nationals anymore. So now they're in Westerns. So it's hopefully a much bigger competition. So, selection criteria. So this is for you, parents, I don't think, uh, Johnny, um, it's a few years down the road. But, uh, three, three and four, their top five athletes will be funded. So that means they get a portion of money to attend the trip. Um, this is all team travel. It's not traveling with the parents. Um, so the first year that that would happen would be nine and ten. Uh, and then the next five are eligible to attend attend the competition but it's self-funded and then you have your level four youth and open and there's a top four all around and then there's a Chris Grabwecki formula that they're trying to implement which is a mathematical formula to pick the best team results from the best team of athletes and that is uh, funded as well uh, 
and then Open may attend nationals as well, but you can only get funding for one. Uh, then there's your national championships. Open, there's a team of eight. Novice, there's a team of six. Junior and senior attend if they meet the specific requirements. So if you do not have the junior requirements, you know, even though, like, you can compete provincially as a junior, but you cannot attend nationals if you don't meet the requirements. Um, and then we have our trips, like we went to China this past year, which is an amazing opportunity for the boys. It was a great experience for everyone. To travel with the team, you must be age 13 and or have attended national championships. And to travel with your parents, that's more a head coach selection. So Jin would say, yeah, this kid, you know, he's a little bit younger, but he's training really well, he's doing really good, he's welcome to attend, but it'd be, a parent would have to accompany him. And then we have our out of country competitions, like Las Vegas. Uh, traveling with the team is the same as any outside trips. And then to attend the competition would be open to any level if they can meet the new level and competition requirements. So attending Las Vegas, the boys had to learn new United States rules routines, right? So these level one boys, you know, especially for the first year of level one, they're, they're learning those new level one routines. It's a lot for them to learn another set of routines. My guys, second year level ones, they've already kind of done a bit, so it was a little bit easier to learn these new level one routines. Does Vegas have level one and level two competition? It, it's, well, it's, it's level four is the youngest. They had boys like age six, seven, all the way to Olympic medalists. Yeah. There was 3,100 boys. And our little level four is one uh, team. We so got our, our little boys there, yes. I love Vegas. Oh, yeah, all the way to Olympics. They yeah. have one medalist there. Yeah. And, 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 and national selection. Uh, meet yeah. for their senior athletes. They have to go to that meet. Wow. One of the really good things about uh, about Vegas is the amount of boys that participate. So our so Noah, Zach, and Matt, they're three of our pre-argos. And no, in there... No, not pre-argos. Sorry, <laughs> Elite 3. Elite 3, please. Elite 3. <laughs> they, uh, they compete roughly against 10 to 12 boys here in the province. Uh, there was 200 boys in their category down there. Um, and they split them up into multiple groups, roughly 40 to 50 per, oh. per group. So it gives the opportunity for more boys to get on the podium. And so it's the routines much difference for the um, At the lower levels, the routines are kind of similar. But as you get older, um, you start progressing. Yeah, the routines, the routines change like quite a bit. They had to use handles for yeah. the little boys. So that was, a, that was a big, the pommels was a big <coughs> change for our little guys. Is really in Canada, we don't touch handles until novice. Whereas they start handles Six. up here. Mm -hmm. wow. Their first year is a, one routine on the mushroom and one routine on the handles. So that was a big change for us. We did good. No, we did, yeah, we did great. Part of that is we believe our boys are yeah. the best prepared. Yeah. So if you want them to learn a new routine, they'll yeah. be able to, because their base of gymnastics no. is set. So yeah. their base is set so that they should be able to learn a routine right. of whatever gymnastics. And we player. don't train just basically and these are all compulsory routines, right? So the teams, set, the teams are set out by AGF or Gymnastics Canada. So, you know, those are the teams we got to compete, but we as a club have our own expectations and things that, that we try to follow because really what it matters is how good you are at the end of the line, right? This is all fun and games. This is, you know, are you going to make the Olympics, go to Worlds and stuff like that. So we have our path and our ideas of what we need to teach, what we want the boys to learn at a specific age, competition-wise, they're following a certain and compulsory. And as I was explaining, these rules change yeah. all the time. Uh -huh. So your vision, though, has to be much more long-term than being switching every four years. Uh -huh. So Jin has set of routines that every boy will have to learn. Uh -huh. That won't change because we know what good gymnastics is. We know what you have to do. So if you can learn that routine, you'll be fine. And again, just like learning the U.S. routines, you'll be able to learn the Canadian routine, no problem, if you have that other base. Yeah, our, our boys really had no issue learning uh, their routines to go down this year. And we, we really only spend, like, we didn't really touch the USA routines until after first qualifier, which was the end of January. So we gave them a month to prep, and, and it, was, it was an awesome experience for the kids. They did really well. Um, so that's any questions about selection criteria and, and that. So this kind of is a couple years away for, for some of you. Um, Here's a couple competitions that we've attended in the past or have heard good things about. We've done Las Vegas two years in a row. Uh, 
great competition. We may want to shake it up a bit next year. Uh, another one that we've done in the past is Peter Vidmar in Los Angeles. So that's one that I went to as an athlete. It's a little bit smaller, but it's in Los Angeles. It's pretty sweet. College, uh, universities go to that yeah. one too. So that's kind of so their... It, it's the, a little bit school. better for the a little bit older athletes. Yeah. Um, I can't really remember what the younger... We didn't really have many younger boys back then. Uh, the Uliukin Invitation in Texas. Um, that's a pretty good one. We went to that one as well. That's a pretty big competition. And then there's a few newer ones. The Houston National International we heard about. It's uh, supposed to be huge. The only thing with this one is it falls close to the end of January, which first may trial. be a little bit difficult to conflict with first trials. Uh, one that Steve, the women's tech coach, talked about, Sand Dollar in Orlando. That's a huge uh, men and women's competition. Um, and that's the end of January as well. So that one we have to see about. One I heard about this weekend in Vegas is the Arnold uh, Gymnastics Challenge. That's uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger runs a huge athletic festival in uh, Columbus. And uh, there's gymnastics and weight. There's all sorts of aerobic and athletic uh, events there. Uh, there's a Colorado Open. It's the end of February. Same with the Arnold one. And then this one, we got a brochure when we were in Vegas two guys that were uh, former U.S. Uh, Olympians um, run this camp in Tennessee and from just from reading the brochure it looked like one of the most amazing camps ever so these are just things that we have in mind that may be possible events in the future um, we usually only do one a year and then we're always looking to do one sort of uh, trip if possible yeah, so the, this the trip one, we try to do more in a training cap, yeah. so that's a lot less stressful on the kids learning routines. They get all the same kind of experiences, but we're learning good gymnastics. Um, competition does put a lot of stress on the kids because they want to perform, and sometimes when you travel, it's hard to perform at your best at a young age. So we don't always want to put the stress of having to perform at a high level when we travel, and doing a training camp is the best way to do that. Yeah. Also going on a training camp, if it's parents with them, it exposes the kids to travel, for when they are going to nationals without the parents. It's something that our club does probably better than any other gym, is we do provide travel opportunities for the kids, and the first one isn't nationals when it really does matter. It's yeah. not new to them. Oh, Ed, that's uncomfortable. Done that before. No, mom's not here. Cafeteria food, not so good. Done that before. So it's just not a shock to their system because it's something they've been exposed to. And our kids of our generation, they're well taken care of by you parents. So sometimes when we go on these trips, it is good to be exposed to a situation where they do have to be adaptable. Like the Riviera Hotel. Like the Riviera Hotel. Pools <laughs> closed, come on. Oh. Totally. That's what terrible. Is, what is. Um, one thing with training camps is, is we try to teach, we want all of our boys to be able to learn to take feedback and coaching from anyone, right? You know, all the coaches down on the floor, we all work together and try to have the same vision, same ideas, path. So if our boys, if I'm going over and talking to Cam's group or vice versa or Jin comes by, you know, we want our boys to, if they hear a correction from someone else, they listen to that correction and not. And that's one of the things we like about training camps is boys get to work with coaches from all over the world. When we went to China, the boys were working with Chinese coaches and, you know, and we would expect that the boys would understand, you know, that even though, you know, may, we, may, we may not understand their correction or their, try it and have fun with it and, and see how it works. Because sometimes different variations of skills or techniques sometimes make clicks for kids, right? And it makes things easier for them. Um, One thing too that you need to realize is that men's program meets probably every other week where we talk about all the boys, every boy. So when Scott's having a difficulty with some boys or they're having difficulties learning or things are going great, we all know about